of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Dear friends, 40 days ago we celebrated the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we recall the day on which he was presented in the temple, when he was offered to the Father and shown to his people. As a sign of his coming among us, his mother was purified, as we now come to him for cleansing. In their old age, Simeon and Anna recognized him as their Lord, as we today sing of his glory. In this Eucharist, we celebrate both the joy of his coming and his searching judgment, looking back to the day of his birth and forward to the coming days of his passion. And now I invite you, as the introit begins, keeping a social distance to light your candle from the nearest votive candle stand.
As we hold our candles aloft, let us pray. Lord God, the springing source of everlasting light, bless these candles and pour into the hearts of your faithful people the brilliance of your eternal splendour that we who by these kindling flames light up this temple to your glory may have the darkness of our souls dispelled and so be counted worthy to stand before you in that eternal city where you live and reign, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This year, in our procession of light, only the clergy and servants will process. But please hold your light aloft to show the way. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, clothed in majesty, whose beloved Son was this day presented in the temple in substance of our flesh, grant that we may be presented to you with pure and clean hearts by your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord to whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like full of soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the suffering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old, and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely against those who oppress the hired workers in their wages, the widow and the orphan, against those who thrust aside the alien. And do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Responsible psalm is the Lord of hosts, he is the King of the Lord. The Lord, Lord of hosts, he, he is, is the King of the Lord. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all that the world in For it is he who founds it upon the seas and made it down upon the rivers of the world. The Lord of hosts, he is the King of the Lord. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Who can stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure ear, who have not pledged themselves to falsehood, nor sworn by what is before them. The Lord will deliver us. He is the King of glory. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord, and a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, of those who seek your face in God of Jacob. The Lord will deliver us. He is the King of glory. Lift up your heads and gates, lift them high and everlasting doors. And the King of glory, the Lord the strong and mighty, the Lord the mighty in battle, the Lord, Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Lift up your heads and gates, lift them high over the lost ones, and the King of glory. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. The Lord, Lord of hosts, he is, he is the King of glory. Make a, make a sacrifice of atonement 
for the sins of the people, because he himself was tested by what he suffered. He is able to help those who are being tested. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And so they offer the sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I am, I have to confess, a dreadfully erratic shopper. Of course, the trip to purchase food is one of the few joys we are allowed at the moment, and so I take full advantage of this, coming back home with bags laden with a bizarre mix of things purely because they are on offer. I see those little discounted yellow labels and my brain parachutes out the back of my head. But you don't like Sam. I know, but it's a bargain. <laughs> How we judge the value of something is, I think, one of the strangest and most erratic parts of the human psyche. It is even more true of how we choose to judge people. Most of the history of human society has been spent devising ways to judge a person as special, more often than not, at the expense of others. The heresies of prejudice have often have these devices at their very heart. Now, we like to think that we have banished such ways of thinking to the best of our ability, but that, of course, is not true. Not only do underlying hatreds and fears still exist, but other, more seemingly acceptable ones have arrived to take their place, in public at least. Our focus, for example, on education is very laudable, but it does allow us the pleasing sin of looking down on those who don't understand as well as we do, who are thick or stupid. I am put in mind of an old coward's put down when he was told that a scenic but not very cerebral actor was threatening to blow his brains out. Gosh, the great wit said, he must be a very good shot. <laughs> it seems inevitable that we will always find ways to designate ourselves as clever or prettier or holier than thou, whoever thou might be in a particular place or time. Now, I don't want to give too much away about where I come in the order of my siblings. It's always struck me as an eminently sensible idea to have every firstborn male designated as holy. Or at least I did as a child, jockeying for position as one of five children. But now I have accepted the wisdom of our age. We ought to treat one another fairly, with equity, as if we are all holy, just because we are human, rather than because of when we are born, or how clever we are, or where we are from. But I have not changed my mind for the reasons that you might expect. One thing I am emphatically not is a humanist. Faith in humanity is something I find difficult to mentally process, I must confess. This week, just God saw Holocaust Memorial Day. Now, many look at the horrors of Auschwitz and Treblinka and question how one could believe in the love of God. To me, rather, they stand as horrific evidence against faith in humanity. People, humans, that is to say, us, we, thought up planned and then executed the horrors of the 20th and previous centuries. To look on the evils of history as proof in favour of humans and as against God strikes me as a bit like if I were to pick up a brick, hurl it through a glass window on the King's Road, and then stand in a tub saying, if only a policeman had been around to stop things like that happening. Indeed, the law of the Lord, as referenced in our Gospel, has the correction of our wicked instincts at its very heart. When the former chief rabbi Jonathan Sachs was asked where God was in the Holocaust, he replied, He was there in the broken command, thou shalt not kill. The law is not a sanctifying ordinance, but it might stand to remind us of our responsibilities, as per Mary and Joseph's visit to the temple, and so, in doing so, prevent us from doing greater evil. In short, I acknowledge that we might, nay, we must, delineate, give role to distinguish in order to have a functioning civil society. But I am yet to be convinced that I should have faith in the vague collection of characteristics, often not good ones, that we call humanity. And yet I am called, we are called, as Christians, to love one another, to honour human life, and to rejoice in it lived to the full. I hope I do those things to the best of my ability. Indeed, living life to its full is precisely what I intend to do when it is possible again. How then is this reconcilable with a lack of faith in the human condition? Can rejoicing and scepticism go hand in hand? Well, yes, and the reconciling of the two is at the heart of my faith as a Christian.
Christian. The place where that reconciliation happens, a fallen nature transformed into one worth celebrating, is in the person of Jesus Christ. At the heart of the Incarnation, at the centre of the Gospel, is this idea that any sense of us as special, as designated, holy, comes not from the working of the law, nor from some innate goodness of people, but from the taking of our nature into the Godhead, in the person of Christ. In some ways, then, candlemas is the eureka moment of the season of the Incarnation. After all those weeks of signs and wonders pointing, hinting towards the enormity of the coming of Jesus, finally two people, two people of prayer and devotion, Simeon and Anna, have the penny drop in front of them, and then burst forth in prayer and praise and song. There is a sense, therefore, of completion in this feast, a sense that things will be restored and redeemed, a sense too in Simeon and Anna, of lives well lived, of lives complete, of lives finally finding their value. Simeon's song was the best of ours. It is one that I and many other Christians who have lived the ages have said every single day, as it is set as the second canticle of the evening prayer. Lord, now let us allow thy servants depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Be a light to light on the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people in Israel. Simeon doesn't see salvation himself, and despite his years of righteousness, he doesn't accord it to his acts or to his words. He recognizes salvation and he sees it in Jesus Christ, even though at this point he is but a little child. He feels, he sees, he knows that it is through Christ that salvation comes. He and Anna see that, even at the very end of their lives, the transformation of our dust into clay is possible. Nay, more, it's prophesied and fulfilled in the baby that lies before them. Faith in our goodness, then, is shown even by these, who have lived lives good and holy as any, to be found not in some humanistic totting up of earthly doings, but by the ultimate view of God come down to earth. Their light and their glory, our light and our glory, is humanity transformed and transfigured in the person of Jesus Christ. Yet we know there is more to this truth. How is it that this transformation is effected? How is it that it is proclaimed, it is proclaimed, and made known? Well, Candlemas may be the grand finale of the season of the Incarnation, but it's also a pivot of the year. And whilst we are also keeping a transferred version of Candlemas this morning, today is also the Sunday known as Septuagesim, the Sunday marking 70 days until Easter. Both of these moments in our church year are ones of transition, where as we turn to Lent and to the cross, that where we turn to Lent and to the cross, that instrument of torture turned into a symbol of salvation and sin. The cross's shadows are there. If you will look for them. Mary is told in our gospel of her grief. Those prophecies of the servant suffering are echoed. And of course, we are told that Mary and Joseph come to the temple with a sacrifice in their hands. Jesus Christ is the firstborn of Mary, but he is also the firstborn of all creation, the one by whom the chains of hell are broken and the gates of heaven flung wide. He is the first fruit of a new creation in which we will be made as we ought to be. I cannot stand up here today and claim that I am holy, or even just special, because of who I am or when I was born. I cannot stand here and tell you that you are holy, or even special, because of who you are. What I can tell you, promise you, is that we are consecrated, set aside as the holy people of God, because of who He is. He is the Christ. The light to lighten the Gentiles, the glory of the people of Israel, the sacrificial victim, and the first fruits of the resurrection. He is ours, and we, yes, we, despite our vanities and our follies and our failures, we are his. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In confidence and in faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we celebrate today the presentation in the temple of your Son, acclaimed by Simeon as the glory of Israel and a light to lighten all peoples. We pray for the Church that it may share his light and reflect his glory. We pray for Sarah, Bishop of London, and Gray, Bishop of Kensington. We give thanks for all who have carried the torch of faith in the past and especially for all who have carried it in this place. May we, in our generation, be faithful witnesses to your sacred love. Lord of hosts, we pray for your holy name. Lord, Simeon described your Christ as a sign that will be opposed. Open the hearts of the powerful to the plight of the powerless. We pray for the nations of the world, that dissenting voices may be heard and heeded, and the right to freedom of opinion and expression be upheld. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, for all members of Parliament, and for the flourishing of democratic processes and principles in our land. Restore us in your peace. Lord of hosts, we pray for the Lord. You see our inner thoughts, and we can keep no secrets from you. Cleanse and revive our spirits for your praise and glory. We pray for all involved in broadcast and print journalism, for those who seek to call leaders to account, and for honest and just reporting. As we stand on holy ground, preserve us in truth and godly living. Lord of hosts, we pray for you. Lord, we come before you utterly dependent on your grace for all that sustains our living. Teach us to praise you in sickness and in health. We pray for the sick and those in pain, especially for Sheila Porritt, Edward Speed, Poppy Ewans, Tony Clark, Colleen Sullivan, and Lawrence and Magda. Bring reassurance that, though mortal, we are precious in your sight. Lord of hosts, we praise you. Lord, you give leave to your faithful ones to depart in your peace. Hear our prayer for all who have died. We pray for the repose of the soul of Anthony Dawes, St. John Wright, Hazel Cawthorn and Joan Moore, whose funeral rites will take place here this week. Teach us with them to sing the hallelujahs of promises fulfilled. 
Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And the light that we shine upon. May they rest in peace. And rise in peace. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from our high has broken upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Let us pray. Father, in Christ there has sprung up a light for the righteous. Accept the offering of your church and grant that Christ may shine in us to the praise and glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, when you have made your communion this morning, would you relight your candle from the nearest votive candle stand? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to the Lord. It is indeed right and good always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, who is one with you from all eternity. For on this day he appeared in the temple in substance of our flesh, to come near to us in judgment. He searches the hearts of all your people and brings to light the image of your splendour. Your servant Simeon acclaimed him as the light to lighten the nations, while Anna spoke of him to all who looked for your redemption. Destined for the falling and rising of many, he was lifted high upon the cross, and a sword of sorrow pierced his mother's heart when by his sacrifice he made our peace with you. And now we rejoice and glorify your name that we too have seen your salvation and join with angels and archangels in their unending hymn of praise. you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take Eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, 
so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord, you fulfilled the hope of Simeon and Anna, who lived to welcome the Messiah. May we who have received these gifts beyond words, prepare to meet Christ Jesus when he comes, to bring us to eternal life, for he is alive and reigns, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Would you be seated? Well, a very warm welcome indeed to Holy Trinity Church this morning, whether you join us online uh, or whether you are here in church. Tomorrow, the funeral rites of our beloved sister Joan Rawl, who died at the end of December, will begin. Only 15 people are able, allowed, to attend the funeral. But Joan's family are very happy for us to watch the live stream, which will be broadcast on our YouTube channel at 11 o'clock on Tuesday. Her body will be brought into church tomorrow afternoon. There will be a requiem at 6 o'clock, and then on Tuesday, the funeral service at 11. You'll find the link uh, in our weekly news. If you haven't received that, please let our church wardens know. Joan's daughter, Benny, who lives in New Zealand, and her granddaughter, Emily, won't be able to come for the funeral, but the family are hoping that later in the year there will be an opportunity to hold a memorial service to which all of us will be invited. Of course, it's just a couple of weeks since another star of our congregation went to be with the Lord, Tony Dawes. And it's wonderful that his wife, Leslie, and daughter Stephanie are here with us this morning. I'm sure both of you know that you are held very firmly in our prayers and surrounded by our love at this time. And we look forward to announcing uh, details of Tony's funeral um, shortly. As Father Fergus reminded us in um, his sermon, we are approaching that time of year when we begin an earnest pilgrimage uh, towards Easter. Uh, Lent begins on Ash Wednesday, which this year is the 17th of February. The night before, we're going to try to have an online pancake party uh, at five o'clock in the afternoon, and on Ash Wednesday itself, there will be celebrations of the Eucharist with the imposition of ashes at one o'clock and a song mass at seven. This year, ashes will be sprinkled on our head rather than applied to our foreheads. Also this year, we are joining forces with our neighbouring parish of St Mary's Bourne Street for a series of podcasts which will be available to everybody with the chance of follow-up uh, conversation online. Our Lady for a Lent like no other will explore Lent from the perspective of our Lord's Mother. And these podcasts will feature contributions from the clergy, laity, and musicians of both our churches. For those who would like a good read to accompany their journey through Lent, then Luminaries by the former Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, will be our Lent book this year, looking at the way the light of Christ has shone in the lives of people down the centuries. And copies of that book at £10 a time, which will be posted to your home, uh, can be uh, purchased through the parish office. There will also be, during Lent, uh, a return to the Wednesday evening Mass at half past six. Well, next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month, and we will continue our new tradition of collecting food which is so badly needed for the Kensington and Chelsea Food Bank. 
So if you would like to make a contribution uh, to that project, then please bring uh, some supplies to church with you next Sunday, and they will be taken uh, immediately to uh, the food bank in Notting Hill. I'm afraid that I've got to do as we're having to do at the moment to remind you not to mingle at the end of the service, but to leave as swiftly as you can. Would you stand for the blessing? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust his promises and obey his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.